Has your portfolio been taking a beating lately? Don't worry, I will not try to sell you anything. There are enough of YouTube mystics and gurus around here trying to sell you something. I want to be an educator and a voice of reason in times we find ourselves in right now. Therefore, in this video, I will break down what I am doing in order to use the current microeconomic situation in the stock market to my benefit as much as possible. I will go over my latest trades, what I sold and what I bought, so let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Vido and I'm here to help you better understand the wealth game and become part of the wealth game nation. As the name itself says, it's just a game that the wealthy play and the sooner you realize it's just a game, the sooner you can learn from the rules of the game and take part in the game. On this channel, I cover everything related to personal finance, investing in the stock market, cryptocurrencies, real estate, and everything related to the game. So let the games begin. If your portfolio is losing on paper value, do not worry, more or less, everybody is, is right now. I am well aware that there are some people who are not losing as much as paper value as the overall market at the moment, but I would not want to trade places with those people. The reason why I wouldn't want to trade places with them is because the stock market and in life itself, there's always a trade-off. So if somebody out there has a portfolio that is doing fine right now when the market is going down, this means when the tide changes and the market goes up, their portfolio will not be doing as great as the market. It is as simple as that. There is always a trade-off. I am also well aware that there are different kinds of portfolios out there that try to accommodate every situation, but those are not as nearly as profitable as some portfolios with slightly more risk. If you're looking for a portfolio that can do a decent job during all economic situations, I suggest checking out the Bogglehead 3 Fund Portfolio or Ray Dalio's All Weather Portfolio. However, this is not what I'm talking about in this video, nor what am I about in general. It is totally fine to be into those things if you're lazy and a wimp, but if you're anything like me and you like to live dangerously, a little scared now and then never hurt anybody. This is of course unless you succumb to the pressure and sell when the market is down. If you do this, you messed up and I cannot help you. Even though I'm not a big Dave Ramsey fan, I will still quote him here. You can't get hurt while riding a roller coaster unless you jump out of the roller coaster. So hey, him the blind chicken sometimes finds the corn. Now, what can we do in the macroeconomic situation like we find ourselves in right now? For everybody living under a rock, we have had a tough go of it lately, so let's look at the current situation. We have been in a pandemic for over two years. During those two years, in order to keep the economy going, the government has been printing a lot of money. This has led us to have more money in the world than there's actual goods in the world. This then results in money losing on value or purchasing power. Suddenly, what you were able to afford with $100, you are no longer able to afford the same thing for $100. Now it costs more. You can also put it differently. A lot of printed money has led to increase in the cost of living. This data is tracked in the Consumer Price Index or the CPI, which has led us to high inflation. The current inflation has reached a 40-year high and it does not seem that it will be slowing down anytime soon. Just for comparison, the average inflation rate for the last 20 years has been 3.1%. The current rate of inflation has been going up steadily over the course of 2021. As you can see in the graph here, the year started out with a rate of inflation at 1.4% and the year has ended 7.5%. Last month, February 2022, the rate of inflation is 7.9%, which is, as I have stated a moment ago, currently at a 40-year high. Now, in order to combat inflation, the Fed has decided to raise interest rates multiple times this year and throughout 2023. Here, they have to be very careful in order not to crank it up too much, otherwise they are running the risk of crashing the stock market. The first rate increase is going to be on March 16, which is tomorrow, and the expectation is that the increase will be 0.25%. If this happens, in my opinion, the stock market will not have a huge reaction to this, as an increase of 0.25% is already priced in into the current prices in the stock market. However, it is possible that the Fed might decide to raise the interest rate by 0.5%, which will, in my opinion, lead to even more sell-off than we have seen so far. And if it, this is not enough, there is a conflict in Europe where Russia has invaded Ukraine, which, in my opinion, is the worst of all the listed points, as it is a man-made problem. This problem comes at the highest cost of human lives and this could have been easily avoided. So, what can we do about all those things? I would say very little. However, when it comes to our investments, there is something we can do. We can evaluate the macroeconomic situation and try to come up with a strategy how to protect our investments. In my opinion, we have four options. Option number one, strengthen our positions in companies that we are already invested in. So, if you have some money on the sidelines 
and you know the investments you have made so far are in sound businesses, then we can use the opportunity to strengthen our positions in those companies. In case you go for this approach, make sure you don't cost average. In case you're not familiar with the concept, this is when you deploy a certain amount of money into an investment over a period of time. What this does for you is eliminate the risk of getting into a position heavily at a high price. For example, you want to invest $1,000 into NVIDIA. Instead, investing it all at once, you should split your investment into $100 over the next 10 weeks. So if the market keeps going down, your average price will be lower than your initial investment. If, however, you decide to deploy all your money at once, it might easily happen that NVIDIA drops by 30% in the next two months, which for those of you who need a calculator for this, I will save you the trouble and tell you that your investment would now be worth $700. Option number two, rotate our money from profitable small cap volatile stocks into discounted and stable large and blue chip stocks. For example, one year ago you wanted to get in on Microsoft, but Microsoft was at an all-time high or close to it. So you have decided to invest instead into a riskier, more volatile, small market cap stock. This smaller market cap stock has made overall profit, but it's going up and down due to the volatility in the market right now. On the other hand, Microsoft is down to a reasonable valuation. We might want to rotate our money from that volatile small market cap stock into Microsoft. This is the approach I am going with and I will get into that in just a moment. Option number three sit on our hands. There is an expression, if you don't like something, do something about it. This expression is fitting to most of life situation, but it is not the case in the stock market. An absolute valid option, and in many cases the best option, is sit and do nothing. This is easier said than done, but then if it would be easy, it wouldn't be fun. So for most people, this might be the best approach. Hopefully you have invested in sound businesses, and it's a matter of time when the prices will recover and be off to new time highs. So if you can, just zone out. Option number four, start investing right now. This is in the case you're not currently invested in the stock market. And in my opinion, there is an opportunity here for you also. Many high quality blue chip stocks have been decimated the last months. Their businesses are stable. They're making profits, but due to the overall macroeconomic situation, these stocks are now on sale. So a great buying opportunity to start your investments with a discount. Also here, be careful, do your own due diligence and dollar cost average. If you find value in this video, I kindly ask you to like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. This helps me a lot when you guys do it and it doesn't cost you anything. In return, I will do my best to help you become more financially literate much faster than I did. By sharing my insights, my journey and teaching you the rules of the game that the wealthy play, you will be able to take part in the game in no time. As I said before, I'm going with the option number two. As in my personal portfolio, I own some volatile small market cap stocks. My decision to rotate some of my money from profitable small market cap volatile stocks into a discounted and stable large cap blue chip stocks is based on the following premise. In this current macroeconomic situation that we find ourselves in, it is not necessary to make high risk, high return plays. These high returns can, at the moment, also be made with a lower risk investments. This does not happen often, but when it does, it is wise to identify them and react to them. One of the stocks that I have decided to sell out of is Nel Asa. For those who are not familiar with this company, this is a Norwegian company specializing in the production, storage and distribution of hydrogen from renewable energy sources. It is a small company that went public in 2017 and has just over 300 employees. It has had a ridiculous return of 353% from March 2020, just when the pandemic hit, to January 2021. Currently at the same price as before the pandemic. I think overall this is a great company with a bright future and I plan on buying back into this company again if the prices get close to the March 2020 price once again. Due to the volatility and a small market cap of this company, this stock might also be a good stock to swing trade. With the profits I have made from selling this position and including my initial investment in this position, I have done the following. First, I have strengthened my position in Meta. Meta has been absolutely obliterated after their Q4 earnings which resulted in a 41% drop and an overall 50% drop in the price at the time of this recording. This is not justified in my opinion. Meta is still a very, very profitable company. And even if we only look at their ad business, this is still a great business. My decision here is not even taking into consideration the metaverse that Meta is building as a second income stream, as this is a highly speculative one. Having only one income stream can also be a make or break situation for Meta as their back is against the wall and their one source of income is endangered through the changes in Google and Apple privacy policies. Second, 
I have strengthened my position in Alphabet. Everybody knows Google and that Google is not going anywhere. Still, at the time of this recording, Alphabet has gone down by 15% from their all-time highs. This is when I bought more shares as I'm convinced that this decline has nothing to do with them as a business. On top of that, Alphabet is doing a 20 to 1 stock split in July 2022, and even though this split will not result in any added value to the current business, psychologically and practically, this split will make this stock more attractive and affordable to the average retail investors. For those who are not familiar with stock splitting, this is when the company decides to split their shares into more shares, usually because of the high prices of a single share. The overall market cap of a company stays the same. Investors who had, for example, one share of a certain stock worth $2,500, now their investment is still worth $2,500, but they now own 20 shares of that company. In some countries and some brokerages, fractional shares are not possible, so this is a practical benefit I was referring to earlier. This is the case at my brokerage, for example, as I am able to buy only full shares. Last but not least, I started a position in Amazon, as Amazon is even a better business than Meta, in my opinion, just because they have multiple streams of income and they're always working on multiple new streams. They have their e-commerce business, Amazon Pride, Amazon Web Services, physical source, etc. At the time of this recording, Amazon is down by 26% from their all-time highs. In addition, Amazon is following into Alphabet's footsteps and has also just announced a 20 to 1 stock split, also planned for July 2022. I believe this will also have a positive impact on the stock's price. Besides that, Amazon has been consolidating at the current price range for almost two years, so I believe that also because of this, Amazon stock will go up, especially considering that 2021 was such a prosperous year for the overall market. For those who are not aware, the overall S&P 500 made an annual return of 27% in 2021. The average annual return of the S&P 500 is 9.8%. For those of you who can't do the math in your head, this is almost a triple return in 2021. On the other hand, for the whole 2021, Amazon has made 2% return. This is what I mean with consolidating at the current price level. So that was my strategy to navigate through the landscape we find ourselves in right now. Now, you tell me, what is your strategy in this macroeconomic situation we find ourselves in? Are you making any changes? In case you also go for the same strategy as I did, be careful into what you rotate. In my personal opinion, the oil companies such as ExxonMobil and Chevron, which have been rallying lately, are way too risky as they are sky high right now and it's just a matter of time when the macroeconomic situation goes back to normal and those companies take a nosedive. So if you're thinking about doing something with them, think about shorting them. I personally do not dabble in options as this is not in line with my personal beliefs. So don't be a stranger stranger and leave a comment below as I'm really curious to read about it. Also if you're looking for something else to watch, I made a video about the six main asset classes to invest in, where I also share with you asset classes I invest in. So if you haven't seen it, I suggest you check that one out. It is worth doing so, if I may say so myself. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next game. You're still here? What do you think this is? Marvel Studios? Do I look like Iron Man to you? We have been in a pandemic for over two years. <coughs> <clears throat> Talk about pandemic.